everybody it's thursday and today is our day for art outside of the box i'm judy at the library in white pigeon and we're going to do something fun today a little bit different you may have you may or may not have worked with paper mache before but we're gonna make this nifty little bowl this will be a two-part project we'll get started with the form and doing the paper mache work today i'll show you how to do that step by step and then you're going to have to let this sit for about two or three days before you try and remove it from the form. So we'll get started making the bowl. And then when we meet the following week, I'll show you how to trim it, get ready to paint, and we'll um, look at some different decorations and ways you can paint it. Okay? Give me just a second here and I'll, I'll let you know what we're going to need. Okay, so paper mache comes from the French term, and that literally means chewed, pulped, or mashed paper. And um, this has been around since I just found out today, 200 BC. The ancient Egyptians used to use it to make coffins. In ancient China, they used it to make helmets and different kinds of masks. And in modern days, it's, it's still around. Um, if you've ever heard of Mardi Gras, the big celebration in New Orleans, they use it to make their crazy masks that they wear there. Um, in Mexico, it's typically used for pinatas that are filled with candy and treats that you break apart on, on birthdays. You've probably seen those around too. So there's a lot of different things you can do with it art-wise, and um, bowl making is one of the things that's kind of fun. Very simple materials. You're going to have to raid your kitchen and find yourself a bowl. I'm going to demonstrate on this small bowl. This is plastic, but you can use a plastic bowl. You can use a stainless steel bowl. You're not going to ruin anything after you're finished with this. It'll clean up perfectly and there won't be any damage done. So don't worry about that. The other thing you'll need is some flour, regular flour that you would use for baking bread, and water, and about a tablespoon of salt. So. The mixture for the paste is one part flour to two parts water. For the small bowl, I used a half a cup of flour and a full cup of water and just a little shake. I mixed it up really well and then I put it in the microwave. This was recommended for only about 30 or 40 seconds and it got quite a bit thicker. Um, I could stir this even a little more. There are still some lumps in it, but we can work around it but I would recommend you make a really smooth paste. So kind of keep stirring that with your spoon, smashing it up against the side until you get a nice smooth paste. The other thing is strips of paper. So I just, um, I just went ahead and cut these up out of my newspaper. You'll need quite a few of them. You'll need some longer ones and you'll need some shorter ones. So make yourself a pile of those. I'm working on wax paper. That's a good idea. If I just had this on my newspaper and I went to set it out to dry, everything would stick. So either use wax paper, butcher paper, even saran wrap would work. And the other thing you want to do is take some hand cream or kitchen oil and very lightly rub it over the surface of your bowl. That's going to help when you go to remove this. I'm going to work with some gloves today. Um, this can get a little bit messy. You don't have to wear gloves, but I kind of like to. Then I don't have this stuff all over my fingernails and, and hands. So it's pretty simple, and you may have done this before, but I'm just going to give you a little demonstration. What we're going to want to do is build up about three layers of this paper so your bowl will hold a good shape. The more paper you build up in your layers, the sturdier your piece will be in the end. These are not going to be waterproof when you're finished, okay? This is going to be a decorative piece. You can use it to throw your little odds and ends in, your change in. You could probably even put some fruit in it if you wanted to, but it's not waterproof. All right, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to start right here at the top. This is what I want to be fairly strong. So I'm just dipping my paper in, taking my fingers, and squeezing off the excess. All right. The more time you take when you're putting this on, the better 
your end product will be. You really want to get those little bubbles out of there and make it smooth. If your paper's too big for your bowl, you can just rip it off. But just keep going here. I'm going to overlap. So I'll show you in a minute how you can keep track of how many layers you've done. And this is going to take you a little while to do. I think I spent probably an hour on mine, but it's something if you get a little bit tired of working on it, you've got one or two layers on, you can let it go for a while. You can take your glue mixture and put it in the fridge and get it out later when you're ready to work on it again. So for my first layer, I'm working out from the center. We'll do about half this and then we'll we'll move on to the next step. But you can imagine that I'm I'm going all the way around. It's kind of relaxing. You just sit back, turn on some good music, and just enjoy the process. Think of what a cool piece you're gonna have when you're done. Alright, so I'm just gonna keep going that way until I get it all the way around. And let's just say I have this all covered. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is with a little bit longer piece, and this is kind of important right here. I found this out when I was trying to take my bowl off my form the other day. You want to start sort of around here, but you want to now this, this bowl actually has a little dip in it. You want to have your paper overhang this a little bit. It's not cooperating with me. Okay, but you can see now how my paper is overhanging it. And you'll want to do that all the way around. Okay, that'll make it much easier. And it'll make a nicer area for you to trim up. Okay, so I've got this all done vertically all the way around my ball. Now I'm going to start and I'm going to go horizontally. Okay, so I'll know that this is my second layer. And I'll just keep working my way around. I had cut these pieces of paper for the larger ball that I did, so. If you're working on a smaller bowl, you'll want your paper probably about three or four inches. And as you go, just keep squeezing out that glue, smoothing down your surface. You're going to have a few little bumps and that's perfectly okay. It's kind of the nature of the, of the medium here. And just keep going around. Like I said, it takes some time. Start this one about right here. All right, so we'll say that's my second layer. I've got this all covered in our imagination. My third layer, I'm gonna go vertically again. This might be a little confusing to you because I'm not going to show you the whole piece. I think you'd probably all be bored to tears if you sat here and watched me do this <laughs> for an hour. But if you go on YouTube, there's lots of videos on paper mache. So if you get a little confused, you need a refresher, of course you can watch this video again, but you can also go on, on YouTube. And while you're looking up paper mache, look at some of the beautiful pieces that people have made out of it. I was really amazed at some of the, the bowls that are actually selling in art galleries. It's pretty cool when you consider it's paper and water and flour. But all right, so you've got a 
a vertical layer, you've got one going around, you've got another vertical layer. You're going to keep leaving these little strips hanging at the bottom. Keep on going until you've got four layers. Then I sort of went through and I just took my finger and I squeezed out some of that excess paste and tried to get things as smooth as I could. And that took me a little time. And after you're finished with that, you're going to take this, leave it on some wax paper, put it in another room and forget about it. Don't mess with it for about two days or it's very likely to tear and your hard work will be all in vain. So just pretend like you haven't even seen it. I left it over the weekend. When I came back to work on Tuesday morning, I went right in and there it was. It was all dry and with a little work, I pulled it off the top of the bowl. It did take me a little bit of squeezing and a little bit of peeling, but it, it came off really nicely. So I was happy about that. That's about all there is to paper mache. I hope you have fun with this. If you want to start simple, I would recommend starting with a small project. If you've got a lot of time on your hands, go ahead and get a great big bowl and just go for it. We'll see what you end up with. All right, everyone, it's been a good, fun, messy time and uh, can't wait to see what you come up with next week. We'll be back and we're going to trim our bowls do a little sanding on them, and then we'll get to painting. So start thinking about some ideas. Um, you can go crazy off the board, or you can go very simple. I did pretty simple um, stripes, any kind of patterns, any kind of motif, stenciling, anything goes with these. So get some ideas in mind of how you'd like to decorate your bowl, and we'll, um, we'll see you next week. All right, take care. Bye-bye.